Hey guys, uh, today we're gonna unbox and set up the Came Action GoPro gimbal. Now this is exciting because this is the first GoPro handheld gimbal that I know of that includes the new encoder function. So we talk a lot about this recently um, because these are based on SBGC, which is the simple brushless gimbal controller software. And only recently have they begun to support encoders in uh, their gimbal motors. Um, so anyways, now a lot of the products that are coming out are now including encoders. Encoders uh, should have been a, done a long time ago on all the gimbals, but it was a software that was really uh, the bottleneck that was holding people from being able to develop that into the systems. But now that the software can support encoders, you're going to start seeing a lot more of that. Now, one of the first ones that we saw from Came TV was a Came Single. Huge success, everyone's using it. Um, there's tons of videos just coming out all the time. A lot of people are doing some good things with that. But now they have the GoPro handheld gimbal that has encoders as well. So that's gonna make your batteries more efficient. The system's gonna be way more stable. Um, it's gonna be, the motor's gonna be just stronger overall. It's just a, a better um, kind of sensor to have with your, your gimbals. It's very accurate in tracking the position of the camera. There's no guesswork. Um, so anyways, Let's go and box this thing and we'll take a look at how these uh, encoders kind of function. Now this is how it was sent to me. Um, so we'll take a look at that over here. So this is the case for the uh, Came Action GoPro gimbal. You've got a battery charger here and then we have this little cable. This little cable connects the uh, gimbal to the GoPro so you can actually power your GoPro from the gimbal itself so that your GoPro can run longer basically. So let's uh, take this out of the package. Um, you don't need to see the charger, but uh, there you go. This is actually the back side here with the joystick. This joystick is very similar to what you'll find on say the K, the K Mini. They have a joystick similar to this where it's like a little pad and then you can just move it around. And then on the other side here, the front side where your hand would go is the mode to press buttons, change profiles, or use any of the service modes that are in SBGC. So this is for the service modes uh, or changing profiles. Now, the first thing you'll notice is um, with most gimbals that have encoders, you're not gonna get a full 360 degree rotation. So this actually, uh, the tilt or the pitch has um, limiters. So you can't rotate the camera a full 360 degrees, but it's almost all the way around, but it still has limiters. And that's good because it doesn't tangle up any wires, but the encoders need that. So the Came Single as well also has limiters. You'll notice even the DJI Ronin cannot do a full 360 um, rotation on any, uh, on its pitch or its roll. So uh, even the, the DJI gimbal, uh, DJI Ronin has encoders as well, so they can't do a full rotation. Um, as well as on the roll, you'll have limiters here. And then also on the panning, it has hard stops, hard limiters. So you can't rotate this a full 360 degrees. But you wouldn't need that uh, much movement anyway. You're just here to stabilize the camera. Um, so anyways, the bottom part of this has this little dial here. Now this is actually the on off dial. So it's not a switch. It's not a button. It's actually a dial or a knob. Then you turn the knob and that will power the gimbal up. We'll do that in a second. Under here, they've included a little hand strap and the hand strap just connects with a quarter thread underneath. Now you can take the hand strap off if you're just not, if you're not using it by your hand and then you can attach something like a extension pole. So if you want to get this up higher or maybe lower, you can add an extension pole here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a tripod underneath so that I can uh, balance this thing here. All right, so I've added a little tripod here just to keep my gimbal up on a stand. Uh, but we're going to insert the GoPro over here. Just goes inside of this bracket. Now they've designed this little frame here so that you could just slide your GoPro in and out. So you don't have to really take this whole bracket apart to do it. So you just slide it in place. And once you're seated in, you're gonna tighten this down. 
Now this bracket and these uh, bolts right here are not long enough for you to add a GoPro battery backpack or a GoPro LCD. So that's one of the things that you have to know about this um, system here is that you're not gonna be able to mount a backpack or an LCD using the screws and the bracket that are here on this gimbal. Now, I'm pretty sure it probably could support it. If we were to get a different bracket or, or longer bolts, we probably could add a backpack or a, back, uh, a battery backpack or an LCD on here. Um, but what's provided right now with these screws and this bracket does not let you mount that. So all you're gonna be able to do is mount the GoPro itself. So we have this little cable here. Obviously to charge a GoPro, you just connect to the USB port on the side. And then underneath the gimbal frame here, we would connect this little cable. All right, so we have the uh, cable attached here to the GoPro and that will allow us to charge the GoPro using the internal batteries in the gimbal here. So our GoPro is gonna run a lot longer. Um, it's not required, you don't need this cable. So if your GoPro is fully charged up, you don't even need to mess with this cable at all. But if you wanted to just keep your GoPro powered up longer, running off of these batteries, we could do that by just adding this cable here. So to turn it on, we're just gonna turn this dial here, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And then uh, just make sure you turn this dial or knob all the way so it's locked in place, so it's not loose and that will keep it powered on. So there you go, we have our GoPro powered up. We have the encoders installed here. Um, and we are in profile one right now because we are doing a follow mode on the tilt. We're also doing a follow mode on the pan. Now if I switch profiles to, we no longer have the follow mode on the tilt, but we will still have it on the pan. And then on profile three, we have no follow on the tilt nor do we have follow on the pan. So it's kind of like locked in. We still have full access to our joystick. So here I could tilt up, down, left, left and right. Now I'll go back to profile one. Uh, one of the, th the interesting things about encoders and I demoed this with the uh, Kame TV single is that you can reposition the camera um, by just moving it physically with your hands. Now, again, you could do that with the joystick if we wanted to say pitch up, pitch down, left or right. But you can also just reposition the camera um, by hand by, by moving it and holding it in that position just for a few seconds and it'll maintain that position. That's super handy, especially if you're trying to calibrate things like your roll, your pitch uh, or anything like that. So here, I'm just gonna tilt this back, hold it for a few seconds there you go. We, we've readjusted our pitch. So now if I was to uh, adjust or um, move this gimbal around, it will, it will go back to that home position. So if I went to profile three, you'll notice that it will maintain that position. Go back to profile one. So again, if I wanted to reposition this, I could just hold this and it would stay in that position. That's very handy, especially if you ever run into an issue where your horizon is off, slightly tilted. On other gimbals, you'd have to go in and recalibrate the sensors, make sure you're on a level platform, and it takes a little bit more work to do that. Um, but here, if I was to hold this, that would actually be my new horizon, right? So if for some reason I ever got uh, in a mode where it was slightly off or at a drift or anything, I can just grab it, reposition it to its level, and then I could just uh, leave it at that and it would maintain that. So that's very handy to have the encoders. But the thing about the encoders is it is very, very efficient. So you shouldn't really run into a lot of those issues where it starts to drift after uh, a number of uh, you know uses or over time. With, without the encoders, brushless motors can, what they say, skip steps because the motor moves so quickly, it can't track its position accurately. 
But with encoders, it doesn't matter how fast the motor moves, the encoders are actually tracking it very accurately, the position of the motors, so it can always return back to zero or back to its home position. So anyways, that's just kind of a quick look. It is a uh, super stable system from what I could see right now. Um, it works very, very similar to the Kane TV singles, almost exactly because of these encoders. So let me power this off. Again, we just have to turn this knob and we're already off. I'm gonna disconnect this tripod mount very quickly. Now, even though this case is fairly big, I probably would never travel with this case. Um, but if you wanted to travel with this a little bit smaller, it does come apart in two pieces. And then in the handle here is our three batteries. So we would have this piece to travel with, and we would have this little handle here, as well as the three batteries. And that's it. So anyways, that's a quick look at the Came TV, Came Action, uh, three axis gimbal for the GoPro with encoders. Very cool. Um, I'm gonna go out and do some test samples and show you guys some of those uh, examples in a bit. But uh, for more information about this stuff, check it out at the blog, cheesycam.com. All right, guys, so that's it. That's a quick look at the Came TV Came Action GoPro gimbal with encoders. So if you guys want more information about this, check out the blog at cheesycam.com.